In India's rural forests, mining corporations and state militias have launched a violent assault on the Maoist guerrillas and landless tribal communities. Activist and author Arundhati Roy spent weeks with the Maoist fighters in the conflict zone, and her time there is the subject of a new book called Walking with the Comrades. It's a first-hand account of the hidden side of the global economy and an analysis of a long-running and often misunderstood armed movement. She joins us now from New York. Arundhati Roy, welcome to FSRN. Thank you so much. Let's begin with the region where you spent time, Danda Karanya in India. Describe the place and the people who live there. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of large swathe of uh, uninterrupted forest inhabited mostly by uh, various indigenous uh, tribes. The area that, that I visited was mostly a tribe called the Gonds. And there, for the last 30 years, there's been a sort of incipient uh, Maoist movement, which has right now surfaced in a, in a, in a really uh, serious way because of uh, the fact that the Indian government has signed over uh, much of this forest land, the rivers, the mountains, everything, to, to various multinational corporations for building, uh, for making dams and steel plants and aluminum refineries and all of that. So th- there are altogether in India about 100 million indigenous people and um, seriously under threat, living very, very fragile lives. You talk about the agreements that have been made between these multinational corporations and the Indian government, these formal agreements. Um, One of those companies that's operating in the region is called Vedanta. Can you tell us about that company and how it operates in the area? Well, (coughs) Vedanta wasn't in the area exactly that I visited, though it was coming there, you know, uh, uh, but uh, it had signed... uh, huge agreements for the mining of bauxite in the state of Orissa. So uh, Vedanta, it's, a, it's one of the largest corporations in the world. It's listed on the London Stock, Stock Exchange. Um, its CEO lives in the house of the former house of the Shah of Iran. And it is uh, mining in areas where these endangered tribes, the Dungriya Kond, live. And it's one of the most uh, ruthless uh, mining companies in the world, I would say. Actually, the process of mining bauxite and turning it into aluminum is one of the most toxic processes in the world. And aluminum is sort of central to the weapons industry. So uh, because it's such a toxic process, it's been sort of uh, exported out of Europe and America to countries like India. But that process requires such a lot of water and such a lot of electricity, that, uh, and, it, and it creates such a lot of toxic waste that it devastates the entire environment where, where an aluminum refinery might be set up. So uh, Vedanta is one of the companies, but there are many, many others as well. Another aspect of this, uh, in addition to the influence of uh, multinational corporations and mining, is the um, military campaign. And the Indian government launched a campaign called Operation Green Hunt uh, against Maoist forces. It came after Prime Minister Manmohan Singh called rebels the single biggest internal security challenge ever faced by the country. How does Operation Green Hunt play out on the ground there? Well, Operation Green Hunt was announced towards in, in, in uh, 2009, and the shares of mining companies went up. And then something like 200,000 paramilitary, heavily armed paramilitary forces began to move into the forests. So now, as we speak, preparations are on for the army to move in. And so, so we are going to witness India, which called itself the largest democracy in the world, which has already deployed its army several times, you know, in states of the Northeast, in Kashmir, in Telangana, in Goa, in Punjab, now against its poorest people. And uh, India has one of the biggest defense budgets in the world. So, so, so this is all going, all this power is going to, is going to be directed against 
the poorest people in the country because those memorandums of understanding have been signed and the corporations are running out of patience. Questions fill your writing in this book, questions about preconceptions, uh, about the role of the military or corporations, about the idea even of of armed struggle, of justice, of poverty. It's a continual and, and focused inquiry that animates this book. What questions do you still have at this point? Well, I think um, the, the, the question now is not an analytical question so much as a question of what do we do to dismantle what we know is an absolutely destructive way of thinking, way of living, you know, uh, what is it that connects the Wall Street occupation to the people in the forest? And I think what connects it is absolute exclusion of the majority of the people in the world for the obscene benefit of a very few. And so after having gone through almost 10 or 12 years of traveling, thinking, writing about these things, I come to some pretty simple conclusions, one of which is that there has to be a lid on on the amassing of wealth for any individual or any corporation. It's just suicidal. So uh, I think we, we really have to enter a, a period where uh, we, we begin to put a lid on all of this and a cap on all of this just, just for the survival of, of not just human beings but uh, the planet itself. Arundhati Roy's new book is called Walking with the Comrades. It documents the weeks she spent with Maoist guerrillas in the forests of India, and it brings a critical look at the violent government response to the movement. Arundhati Roy, thanks for joining us. You're so welcome. And you can listen to more of this conversation with Arundhati Roy on our website, fsrn.org.